up, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for Married to Medicine. So, I got my tea in hand. We'll talk about the video really quickly. Um, if you guys are wondering, like, why the fuck this video was not on shortly after the show aired, this is because I was absent minded as fuck. I knew uh, Friday was Friday, <laughs> it was coming, going, but the main thing is I was just fucking tired. I'm not even gonna fucking lie. And had a long ass day, long ass week, and you know, shit, when you tired, you take your ass the fuck to bed, so I took my ass the fuck to bed, that's what the fuck it was, woke up yesterday, and all that I really did, like, I really didn't get, I really didn't get much accomplished, but I did a lot of study, and it just is what it was, like, I watched it, I mean, I took my fucking notes, but I didn't feel like setting all this shit up, which I should have, so, today is getting this video done, giving y'all the real households of Atlanta later on tonight, and then doing some uh, recording for my other channels. So I'm going to try to get all that shit done today to make up for what I haven't done. So in case you were wondering. Now, there are going to be times next month. Well, actually over the next several months. There are going to be times that I'm not going to be here. I will more than likely let you know before I chuck the deuces. Or if anything, I'll probably shoot a video saying that I'm gone. And only post it when I'm actually gone. Again, for security reasons. You know, I don't even know. It is what it is. And... I'm going to just leave that where the fuck it's at. So, that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. And in case y'all wonder, it's 11.53 in the morning. Well, it's almost noon, so. I don't give a fuck what time it is. If I want to have a drink, especially if I ain't got to go work, I'm going to have a damn drink, okay? Um, so, Darren finally arrives. No, I'm sorry. Damon leaves. But Darren does right. Damon leaves to go to work. Darren finally arrives. His arm is hurt and it is in a sling. Now, again, looking at how everything has panned out. In the confessional, which means that this was shot after the sequence of events, he is saying to his wife, and you know, being a ER, dot this, and the third, you know, hurt my arm, you know, because you got to do a whole lot of lifting this, and the third. In all of my experiences, um, I've never seen a fucking doctor lift. I've seen assistants do it. I've seen the nurses do it. Stab. I've never seen a doctor lift. Nothing more than some utensils and whatnot, but I could be fucking wrong. But that's what he said in the confessional. And I and we'll come back to that. Cause he said that in the confessional. See, this is what see, he fucking up, cause maybe maybe the stereotype of uh, women being able to lie better than men. That's true, because he even fucked the game all the way up. Now, Simone, <clears throat> instead of just them having a white party for her uh, 20th wedding anniversary, she decides that it's going to be a vow uh, renewal ceremony. But the men don't know. Trickery. Heavy is going to be um, officiating the wedding. Since she has been growing spiritually, which I felt some kind of way about it, but hey, it is what it is. I wasn't there. All right. Mariah says she will not participate. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to give y'all this from every aspect that I can. Now, she's saying that she doesn't want to do this based off the merits of when uh, she and Aiden, well, first of all, was Aiden, if I'm not mistaken, he is Indian. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, please correct me because I'm not trying to say him be shady. No. When it comes to people's culture, religion, shit like that, I do my damn to stay far away from because I don't like nobody fucking over my culture and my religion. You feel what I'm saying? <clears throat> but um, he has five other siblings, and all their marriages were arranged, with which that is not uncommon. And even if you think about history in general, even in regards of what fucking ethnicity you belong to, if you date this shit back, arranged marriages were the norm, especially when you had somebody who may have had like a pretty son I'm sorry, pretty daughter, handsome son, and they were uh, poor, if you will, and somebody who had stature and fell in love. So it's one of those where, okay, we're going to sit here and bridge the gap so we can bring some of the one to the family. It is what the fuck it is. So we're not going to say that like this shit ain't happened. And of course, there were age differences. People get upset about that now, but again, it was no way back when I get I got it. But his siblings uh, have arranged marriages. He was the only one that did not have that. Not to mention, Mariah already had a child from a previous engagement. So not only did Aiden go against the grain, 
and okay, I'm not going to have an arranged marriage because I don't think Mariah being like had anything to do with it. It might have. It, it might have. That might have been strike two. But strike three is there's also another child coming into this and it don't belong to you. So and because of all of this, his siblings were not at their wedding. So she was like, if we do any type of um, renewal, we got to get this shit straight on that end. Now, again, playing the other side. Y'all could have said, yes, they could have gotten up there and said something nice to each other, i.e. like they did at the dinner. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is, and I can't fault her for that. I mean, she has her reason. It's one of those where <clears throat> respect the reasons. Hell, my whole thing is shit. And y'all been hearing me say on several different reviews, and again, I say so much in reviews, I don't know what I say between the two. Actually, I did say this last week, Married to Medicine, in uh, regards to... Lisa Nicole, you don't owe nobody a fucking explanation. So if, if Mariah simply said, you know what, my 7 we will not be renewing our vows, but thank you. She could have left with that because you don't have to explain shit. And I'll talk a little bit more about Mariah and some other shit and where I wasn't feeling her this episode, but it is what it is. What, what, the, what the fuck else we got? Nah, 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 nah. So, Dr. Heaven, being messy as always, decides to say, hey, there is an elephant in the room. We need to address the elephant in the room. And it was one of those where I guess other relationships have already been worked on, so the elephant in the room is Mariah and Kwa. Mariah starts off by saying, I was not upset with this. And I'm paraphrasing. There are issues between she and I, and they need to be worked out between she and I and not publicly. I would have been happy if Mariah would have had left it there had left it there but she didn't she then went on to say i have apologized time and time again i'm not gonna apologize anymore amongst all this other stuff now of course yes <clears throat> this is reality television their relationship and the demise of it is real but you can tell there is put on and a little bit of baiting you know because i really do feel that mariah was baiting quad i'm i mean i'm not i said i like mariah i'm not even saying in front i like mariah but I'm not going to be oblivious to the fuck shit. And you could tell that she was baiting. <clears throat> Quad took the bait. And Quad said, you know, you try to turn over a new leaf. But bring like, but what happened at uh, Toy's party wasn't it. Now, yes, uh, Quad's name did come up. But from what I saw, the bulk of the conversation was not necessarily about Quad. And I don't remember how Quad's name came up, but... I mean, still, the totality of it, it wasn't all about her, but, I mean, it is what it is. They start going back and forth, and then Mariah calls her Quad the Fraud, and it, I'm glad Quad didn't name call there, but she did say in her confessional, well, shit, we're going to do the whole rhyming with names and shit. You are Mariah the liar, but I'm glad she didn't do it right there. You know, again, I, you can see that Quad is doing her best to take the high road, and let me say this. One thing that I can give Quad that I can't give any of the other women is even though Quad may cause a scene, she is very conscious of what is going on and she gives just enough. Why do I say that even the whole thing between her and Lisa Nicole, she could have dead, she could have whooped the fuck out of Lisa. Like, what about your lengthy relationship, bitch? Like, again. If, if Quad from the ghetto or the hood, whichever one, because there is a difference between the two, if she from either one of those, I'm telling you, it could have popped out and it could have been, you know what, man, fuck this, let me stomp this hoe. But she was still cognizant of the fact of, you know what, I'm going to verbally embarrass her. I'm not going to swing no matter how badly I want to. I'm going to be petty over here. But she did that. She lounged out of me. If I really want to, I can wreck her. And she's going to hurt her brand her businesses and embarrass her husband by doing all these things but i'm not going to do that to myself so quad is very intelligent i'm not going to take that away from her and i think that even in the midst of this she plays that which is good i mean because sometimes even though a lot of us we we speak from here and not always from here and so and i'm even guilty of it you know sometimes letting this get in the way of this which is something that i don't always do but then when i do i go all the way off but this is what it is so one thing that to, uh, not Toy Quad did say is the friendship for what is worth is over. But when we are in social settings, we can be cordial. Any and everything past that is a no-go. And I feel 
it's one of those where I like Mariah, but I connect with Kwai so much because shit, I'm fucking like that. It's a motherfucker that I work with. There's mother, there's people that, but there's one in particular that I work with. Man, like we, I'm like trying to get my damn timeline right. So, right about late 2015, you know, went did some shit for a month. So that month that I was away, away, but trying to give y'all those blacked out or you know fuzzy, you know, screen reviews because I was away and again I can't have my surround. Again, I gotta be careful about what the fuck I do. I ain't trying to lose my job for y'all asses. But shit went left. You feel what I'm saying? We came back to he came back here, back back to North Carolina, North Crackalacker, and I just let a lot of shit go because one of what the shit happened way back when. I'm gonna leave it there. But when it comes to us being at work, I will be very cordial. I will sit here, you know, if I need to, I do a little hee hee, little kiki key because at the end of the day, we work close with each other. We have our respective sections. We lead individuals, and me being at that time, I'm 30. So me being 28, going on 29 at that point, I'm older than you, and I'm older than most of the people that are up under us. So if any of us have to be the example, damn it, it has to be me, and showing that you don't necessarily have to like a fucking person, but you can coexist. And I do it so well where most people would never know there was an issue between us, but trust and believe. I don't fuck with him, not Pierre. But when we at work, it is what it is. I have that genuine concern because, you know, like I said, you know, we are people of God and, you know, I will love you with the love of God. But that is as far as it's going to go. You feel what I'm saying? But I know how when I'm at work, damn it, we at work business mode. Let's get it cracking. <clears throat> as soon as I'm off the clock, I don't know you. <laughs> you better ba but back up out my face. Like, but that's me. You feel what I'm saying? Some people call it petty. I call it being a motherfucking dope. Because the reality is, is once we, after I was... I don't break bread. I, if I don't fuck with you, I don't break bread with you. Especially in my off time. I don't do it. <clears throat> now, the men, now, while all the women are having this little conversation, the men over yonder, and talking and whatnot, they go, you know, try to do some serving and shit. Don't really care. But Duran, Duran decides that he gonna sit here and tell the men that I was in the bathroom. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. He broke his arm playing basketball. Now, that could have been cool. You could have stayed with that. But why not remember that when you filming for the, you know, filming in your confessionals? Because, of course, this shit going to come up in a reunion. It will be in Darren's best interest to not show up to the reunion. Just, just don't fucking do this to yourself, cuz. But there's that. He even, hold on a minute. He then says the way that he, um, Mrs. Fight is that he was in the bathroom. And I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, cuz, if you was in the bathroom, who or what were you doing in the bathroom? That, cuz, one, cuz the way that he's painting the picture is that he was in there, came out, all of a sudden they changed, um, the, uh, terminal in which his flight was leaving. By the time he made it to set flight, um, it had already taken off. I part I can partially believe it because I was in the same situation. Um, I think I, I was either at Atlanta or Chicago, getting ready to go where the fuck I was going, and I was at one fucking station. And of course, I don't have my headphones blaring, but I, I mean, I can still hear what's going on in my media, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm even trying to figure out like, why is there ain't nobody here? Because I'm saying like, ain't no way in hell. It's just me getting on this motherfucking plane, not really thinking. But what they did is they had changed the uh, terminal, but they didn't announce it. It was like on the little fucking TV screens and whatnot, and I didn't see that. And they finally had made an announcement that my plane was going was at another fucking terminal. No, it was Chicago. I, I was at O'Hare. And literally, I had to go from one end of the fucking airport to the other. And when I say I hauled ass, I ain't... I sh I don't even think I ran my two mile that motherfucking fast because I was just like, oh, and like literally, it, it was almost like it was a last minute change, but I didn't hear. It. So I can somewhat believe that, but if you was in there that long that they changed it and you didn't catch it, bruh, something is wrong. Something is wrong. But he hit them with that, and even, you know, Eugene and uh, Toya clocked them in uh, their confession of saying, oh, <laughs> he must think y'all. <laughs> fucking Lisa, must think we Lisa, that we that fucking stupid, and again, you know, my whole thing is, I ain't got a problem with shit, men being messy and petty, cause shit, I, I let a motherfucker know all rip shit, I'm petty as fuck, I'm messy as fuck most of the time, 
I'm just saying, you know, especially with anything I should do with me, shit. I most of them I could be saying like, mm. Mm. But he messy and he petty and he full of it. He just trying to plead like he ain't. So I, I see you. I see you, Dr. Eugene. I see you, motherfucker. But uh trying to make sure I got all it up. The one thing I will say, uh, when Darren brings up Lisa and how, you know, she felt attacked this and a third. And Eugene with the quickness, because he knew he was good, was like, well, you know, me, like, myself and Toya aren't innocent, but Lisa isn't either. And this is one of those ways, just like, just own up to your shit. And Darren, rather than, and at the same time, I can understand why he didn't go and check Eugene, but at the same time, he probably should have checked Eugene, because he wasn't as one of those where it's one thing for two women to go at it. But as soon as, and I would have told him, like, on some real shit, bruh, if it was your wife and my wife going at it, it is what the fuck it is. Let them go at it. But the moment you as a man decide to insert yourself into bitch shit, I have a problem with it, especially if I'm not the fuck here. So regards to how wrong she is, nigga, you don't address my wife like that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that would have been me. But he let it go. But he did say, I checked her. Now, I don't know in what regards of checked he meant. You know, because... This is one of those where he could have mentioned it one of two different ways where it's just like, you know, I checked her in terms of leading the men out of the situation because bringing the men into the situation, what this will do is it will cause us as men to have to go at it. If he said he checked Lisa in that regards of leading the men out of the conversation, that's one thing. Now, if he's saying that I checked her as in I put my foot down, look, bro. Don't be like Kunta. But I don't believe him. And the rest of the men, y'all be a plump food listen to this motherfucker. Because everybody got their issue. Y'all ain't got his issues. Y'all don't want to inherit his issues. Now, um, Quad got the girls together for the uh, lookbook. Simone is distracting uh, Dr. Jackie until... Actually, let, let me, I'm sorry, let me not do that. Dr. Simone, I, I, and I've noticed that I've done this where I put doctor only in front of Jackie's name and sometimes heavy and not Simone, and that is so, that's so fucking disrespectful. Dr. Simone takes Dr. Jackie and distracts her while Quad is getting everything together and then brings her up. And that meant the world to Dr. Jackie. It really did. And the one thing that upset, like, I was happy that they did it what upset me the most is Lisa Nicole. Like, you was so adamant about not doing it. Maybe because you got close to Mariah. I don't know. But what was the difference between you doing it then and you doing it now? I have no fucking idea. Some people felt the kind of way about Mariah not doing it and them having to cater to Mariah. I mean, but fuck it is what the fuck it is now. I do believe that Mariah could have still posed because... They, didn't, they did not necessarily have to do a full body shot where they could have kept her uh, cast out of it. But, I mean, it is what it is. They got her involved. I will say she got her karma because the bird shitted on her motherfucking wrist. So, you know, hey, God don't like ugly, ugly and neither does Mother Nature. Moving on. So, Simone and Caesar's recommitment ceremony. All that I'm really going to talk about here is Cecil. You did that, brother. You did that shit. Pretty much told her, I think he said, well, like, he a Morehouse man or some shit like that, and, you know, he always stay ready. I'm like, well, okay. All right. You <laughs> best say that shit. And then, not only that, upgraded the band. Okay. Upgraded the motherfucking band, and you know what? I was fucking here for it. Because on some real shit, you know, the day come that I get married, my wedding is going to be real low-key. It's not going to be extravagant, even if I have the funds to make it that way. Why? Because I got to make it. Like, it's one of those where I don't understand. Because I think the average American wedding costs $10,000. Motherfucker, why? But I don't understand why people will sit and spend so much money on a wedding when you don't, when you probably still have car notes, other fucking bills, you don't have a fucking house, so I got it, it's a memory, but you're gonna sit here and spend all this money on a memory, more or less just sit here and stun on people when you're gonna further put yourselves in debt. I will not do that. My whole thing is, we will have something that is nice, that is quaint, especially following the basis of Judaism. If y'all don't know about it, look into it. 
and at 10 years or even in increments of five, then we can start sitting here and, you know, kind of going a little balls to the wall and shit. Hell yeah. Upgrading some motherfucking rings. But I saw that motherfucker ring. I was like, hey, you did that. You you did that shit because. And I think he's I think his field is IT. So, even though know, he's not a doctor. I believe it's IT, which he get y'all doing that shit and the fact that y'all got two motherfuckers you know what here's the everybody on this motherfucker show need to look at their marriage even though it's not all i'm gonna say is this they got two houses two sources of fucking income doing they thug this or raising some good ass kids you know what they doing the motherfucking thing okay tilts my head to y'all uh heavy and lisa apologize to each other dr heavy and lisa apologize to each other more or less, Lisa gives her apology. I call it bullshit, but I guess it's one of those, you know what, let's just like kind of leave this shit where the fuck it's at. We'll move on. Now, we get back to the stage. Lisa and Mariah have a spa day. Now, I'm going to say this. Lisa, you treading, baby. Because you and Quad good, and this is one of those where you can lit first and foremost. First and foremost. I don't know the, the relationship that she has with Quad. If it's a friendship, then Lisa is dead the fuck wrong. If she's trying to build something, you're still dead the fuck wrong. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm going to just say this, because, and it's not for me to sit here and start any fucking uh, drum or whatever. But, of course, shit happened on the YT last year. And it involved, you know, a group that I still am, for what I'm attached to. And like I said, I'm still cool with everybody in the group for the most part. I mean, the the clust. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. People fell out. It is what it is. I still communicate with said people. And this has been conversations where somebody name get brought up. And I'm just like, we're not going to do that because I still fucks with that other person. So let's not even go there. Let's not even go there. And it's even like, well, if that person does, I'm like, I've already cleared that up with that other person. What I don't do is I won't do that. One, if, I'm, if I fucks with the both of y'all, we're going to talk about everything but that other fucking person point blank and the fucking period because i don't i'm not trying to get myself involved in it and i don't even need to sit here and bring out the worst out of myself so with that i feel that she was wrong now it is what it is maybe she chose her fucking side but and if it was just her merely listening she should have listened with no comments but saying that you know she looks like the type and i know somebody that you know was back with her way back when that said this that and third and just like oh Oh, <laughs> that's fucked up. Now, Mariah spills all across tea, which I want to say maybe half of it we didn't know because the other half had already been mentioned and even um, Bravo played some of that back. So roughly half of it we didn't know. But um, went ahead and put that shit out there. And, you know, a lot of people feel some kind of way. Now, here's the thing. I know Mariah said that what happened between us, we need to discuss with ourselves. I feel I feel that before she brought this to Lisa Nicole, she should have brought this to Quad. I wholeheartedly believe that she should have brought this to Quad and at least let them talk about it first. Now, let's sit here and keep it all the way 1,000. Bravo been doing Mariah very, very dirty because um, and I, I've been catching Mariah's... Um, uh, Facebook lives, <clears throat> her kind of giving commentary, her even trying to not go so deep into things that she even said that she had a lot of stuff going on, which from what I hear, some of that would have been great to, of, um, it would have been great to see on camera, but for whatever reason, lines have been drawn in the sand. So she has to get her scenes in the best way possible. And I'm under the assumption that her having this particular scene was to try to get her a little bit more camera time later. And if that is the case, it is what it is. Do what you got to do. But I felt that it was wrong to have this conversation when it wasn't had with Quad. When you had an opportunity to bring it to Quad when y'all were sitting down. My thing is, if you're going to put it out, if since you put it out there, at least you should just put it out to the whole motherfucking group, to be completely fucking honest. But she had that whole, this is what I did for her. And it was almost just that whole stature type thing where it's just like, I was here. And kind of get my hands like okay so i was here she was here and now it's kind of off balance 
And I, I guess just that whole she needs to forever be grateful for the opportunity in which I provided her. And if that's the case, I mean, it is kind of fucked up. I can't fault somebody for feeling that way, but it is kind of fucked up that that's how you may value a friendship and to sit here and spray it like that is so not cool. And you have a lot of people that saying, you know, because one person did leave a comment and uh, this is no shade towards this person in no way, shape or form, but said I always knew Quad was a fraud. Keyword that was. And if you guys have been watching my Little Women in Atlanta uh, review, I'm not going to quote that because I'm going to be here for like another three minutes trying to quote that. Go back and watch the very ends of it if y'all don't want to watch the whole videos to catch what it is that I've been saying. But again, your past is your past. We're not there anymore. People are always going to want to sit here and bring your past up. It's up to you if you let them. You feel what I'm saying? And it's one of those where I say this all the time. You give a clown a stage, they will perform. You turn off the lights, it's only so much they can do before they fucking stop. I treat situations like fucking unruly children. I don't have kids of my own, but I've raised, and I have, I do mean raised, some of my cousin's children because they were still out there trying, you know, pop their pussy and do, and, you know, sit here and still fuck randoms and whatnot. That's what they were doing. So while they was out doing that, I was watching their kids. Man, a kid, most kids want attention. You sit here and ignore them when the child finally realized, like, okay, I'm being ignored. They might try to test you here and there, but they're going to go on and move on to the next thing. My whole thing is this. My past is just that. And my past is only back there for me to reflect on before I sit here and I make my next move. Other than that, that's all it's there for. But if you feel so inclined that I want to sit here and I want to bring your past to, you know, the forefront, it's up to me if I choose to acknowledge it. And if you that motherfucker where you feel so inclined that you want to sit here and bring something up for so many years ago and bring it back to the forefront, I'm going to leave you exactly like wh whatever that incident was in my life i'm gonna leave your ass back there this is me paraphrasing what i said on those fucking reviews but i'm gonna leave you back there so the fact that mariah did that i didn't like that i, I did because that that's grimy as shit and i hope quad don't even go there with her like though i like mariah i do i hope quad don't go there with her do my whole thing is this you allow somebody to bring your past back and throw it in your face because it could be one of those okay and that, that's a simple rebuttal. Because you did, 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 did this. Okay, and? Moving on. Go ahead and end with Jackie and Curtis. They've been giving each other the silent treatment. Curtis finally wants to address the issue. This is one of those where the bulk of, the bulk of everything, Curtis, I'm not here for you. Now, I did say uh, Curtis had compromised. I don't know if I said that in a review or in the comments to somebody. I'm not going to reset that he compromised per se because I don't think that's really what I was trying to say. But when you have somebody that is going through certain things, you sometimes are going through just as much. And I'm never going to say or worse because you can never go through something worse than a person that's going through. But you never know the uh, stress and the trauma and everything else that you know another person goes through when someone is going through so dealing with his wife going through you know cancer twice and beating beating it twice like i said just as much she was going through it he was going through it and him having to even go through that and bear it now the fact that you know he he's very stubborn i get we can all fucking see that he is very fucking stubborn and he wants his way and I think he possibly may want, he wants that because he went through all these things with her. Does it make it right? No, it doesn't. What I will say is we're not going to sit here and pretend as if Jackie is not at fault as well. And, and I need for y'all to hear me out for y'all sit here and stop being keyboard gangsters and shit. I say this for this reason. A closed mouth don't get fed. There is a lot that Jackie said that she has not necessarily brought out to the forefront. And she still hadn't, from what we saw, confessed that to him. But I think if she just lays it out all on the table, she was even intellectually trying to come at him. And I caught it. I don't know if y'all did. Because like I said, I connect, a, I connect a hell of a lot with Jackie in terms of how she's maneuvered through these situations and how I maneuver a lot through life. But it's going to be, if I, y'all know it's going to be a long ass review, so I'm going to get that. Because a lot of this has just been me kind of bridging gaps and shit. But 
he still just wants them to spend time together and they're getting to that point where it's like look you know our good years are behind us you know like here we are but at the same exact time dr jack needs to instill in him that whole motherfucker i ain't scared to sit here and sign them papers instill that fucking fear in his ass which is like don't don't get it twisted you know, even though I don't quote Bianca a whole lot of shit, hit his ass with a you must not know about me. I could have another you in a minute. Matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. But she needs to express to him, I feel this way because of this. And her feeling the boy with working, I know how that is. Like, I am a workaholic when it comes to a lot of things. And in general, we all do that. We all will flock to something to distract us from real life. Um, in my teenage years, after dealing with the fact that just after turning 10, I lost four immediate people in my life. My only, on my mother's side of the family, mind you, uh, my only uncle, one of my three aunts. No, 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 not real. Yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, one of my three aunts. I, for whatever reason, I was including my mother, really. One of my three aunts. And the uh, pillars of the family, my mother's parents, lost all, I, and I lost my grandmother just shortly after turning ten. And the last two, my grandparents, was within the major holiday season, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that right there says the fucking lot. Not to mention, I had already lost my father's parents. So, and other people in my family. I'm talking about just like immediate. It got to a point where after going through my depression and everything else, I kept busy doing other things you know what i'm saying like i was chasing the highs of life literally and figuratively like and when i say that i was getting drunk i was getting high doing all of that when it came to work i stayed doing work drowned myself in music even to the point where when i was in high school i drowned myself in theater and i love theater because okay i have the opportunity to become someone else i can escape my life by pretending to be somebody else you know what I'm saying? And exhaust and it's one of those where you exhaust yourself so much where when you finally come down to reality, it's time to go to bed. So there's not a whole lot of time to think about the bullshit that's going on in your life. So I under I trust me, I understand Dr. Jackie. Please don't get it twisted. But I do feel that she needs to communicate this to her husband. And what needs to happen is she needs to go to counseling or she needs to come to terms with all of this herself. So whether or not it's counseling or her truly coming to grips with it, and once she gets that with herself, then she can sit here and communicate that with her husband. They get closure or they go to counseling and closure. But that's it. I just said more than enough, and this is the longest review that I think I've ever done for this fucking series, but hopefully y'all got something out of this. And again, I'm sorry that it is late because there was really no excuse, but hey, it is what the fuck it is. A motherfucker needs to sleep. So, Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys tonight for The Real Households of Atlanta. And if you guys are on my other channel, um, I will see y'all for a few uh, game uh, playthroughs. So, peace.